everybody for joining us live here. Um, you know, the pandemic is not necessarily behind us, but it's definitely great to be able to see people in person and uh, normalcy kind of letting us know it's game week. You know, I think the feeling that we will have a little more normalcy will take place for us on Saturday when we, for the first time in over a year, welcome our fans back to the shell. And I know our players are excited about this opportunity uh, again, because it was taken away from us and you really uh, don't appreciate things until they're gone. And so I know for us, this would be very welcoming uh, to have our fans back, our families back uh, available to come to the shell and cheer us on. Um, you know, coming out of training camp, I feel we came out of camp pretty healthy. Uh, we haven't had any major injuries. Obviously, we've had the, the bumps and bruises that typically go along with being in a physical training camp, which as I've said, you know, a couple of times, it was a very, very competitive camp for us in all three phases where I really felt uh, we made great strides as a program. We've been able to uh, develop depth at a lot of the positions, and it was very competitive for us. Uh, we welcome a big-time opponent uh, in West Virginia. You know, this is a natural uh, border rivalry a game that's been played a lot of years around here, and for old Turp fans, it's one of those games that was always on the calendar. Um, for, you know, when you have an opportunity to play a team like West Virginia to open up, as I've told our team, it gives us a, a pretty fast idea as to you know what type of team we're going to be. You know, the first couple of games, you typically try to uh, create an identity for yourself as a team, and you know to have a team like West Virginia, who you know the last game they played, they came from behind to beat a really good Army team in the bowl game. Showed great resiliency in that game. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, they were one of the top ranked defenses in the country, really well coached, uh, do a great job of creating turnovers. Uh, they had the number one pass defense in the country. Uh, they were really high up in scoring defense, and so be, uh, they'll present a pretty good challenge, you know, on that side of the ball. But then, you know, they've got a veteran quarterback um, and, and Daggy coming back. Uh, they got a big time running back, uh, you know, uh, and Letty Brown that really does a great job, and then they've got some receivers and skill on the perimeter that I think will test us on that side and then on the special teams. You know, with the skill they have and, and, and on both sides of the ball, I think their, their special teams would be uh, a challenge for us. As I told our team, you know, what a great barometer for us to start off with a team that's coming, from, coming off of a year where they went to a bowl game. Uh, we got them here at home in the shell, which we hope creates a competitive advantage for us. Um, for us, as I've done in many years, we're going to play a lot of players uh, as we continue. Uh, it is what I like to call the growth phase of Maryland football. Uh, we've been able to recruit really well. We've been able to create depth that allows us to play a lot of players. And, you know, we're looking forward to the game this weekend. Um, you know, before I get into the captains, I also want to say, you know, our prayers are with the people down south in Mississippi, uh, Louisiana, and Alabama. You know, Jacorian Bennett, one of our players here uh, from Mobile, his family uh, is down there. They're braving through some of the flooding. So, again, our prayers are with them. And then, you know, our game captains, as we traditionally do for this week, will be uh, Sam O'Connor. Uh, we'll also have Dante Demas, as well as Brian Cobb, serve as our game captains going into the West Virginia game. And so with that, I'll open it up to questions. You guys can raise your hand for that mic on the Hey, Coach. Uh, thanks again for uh, taking a few minutes here. Um, I was looking at the depth chart this morning, and I noticed that uh, Tarheep Steele was listed as an or at a corner nickel. Uh, are you guys planning to rotate in between those positions, or was that more uh, just because Jacorian and Isaiah really impressed? Um, no, we got three starting corners, and, and we have the flexibility to start out, and if we're in our nickel defense, to either play Tarheep at the nickel or the corner, or Jacorian can play in at the nickel. And then we also have Isaiah Hazel. So for us, it's just you guys don't give me a lot of places to put three starting corners. So I created, if you didn't notice, an extra spot. Uh, but Jaquin is a starter for us. Uh, Deontay Banks is a starter for us, as well as Tarheep Steele. And then we have Kenny Bennett that also will be able to play a lot of football and may end up starting. So we feel good about the depth at corner. Uh, they all have the flexibility to be what we call nickel uh, defenders for us. Uh, on the inside, and when you're able to do that with those guys, it opens up the ability to play a lot of players. Um, how has Eric Harris developed since he's been on campus, and how does him being able to play center for you and Jahari move over help you on the offensive 
as I've said, you know, before, O line has been a concern from a depth standpoint. It's the one position group that, through recruiting, as of right now, we haven't been able to fill all the needs and voids that we've had since we've been here. And anytime we recruit a junior college player, as you saw with Mokite and Ami Finau last year, and Challen and the role he played for us last year, we recruit junior college players because we have voids and we're recruiting them to come play. Uh, and so Eric Harris was a great addition and we're very fortunate to be able to get him in here late. He was a guy that had another year of eligibility to play at the junior college ranks and played really well. Uh, he was at a school where we recruited Jacorian from, so we had tape and had ability to see uh, what he would bring to the table, but what he's done is he's been able to add some flexibility to our offensive line. As you see, we've got some guys backing up in spots. Uh, and so that allows us now where Spencer Anderson would have been our second center and, and starting at tackle uh, by signing the center late like we did with Eric Harris. It gives us flexibility to move Jacor uh, Jahari over to the guard position after spending all spring at the center, which again, we've created depth because he can play both positions. But Eric came in picked up our system really well. Coach Braswell and, and, and our staff did a really good job of getting him caught up, but it's a testament to the type of uh, mental intelligence and football intelligence he has that within a six week period of time, he's been able to come in here, grasp what we do, kind of be the quarterback up front. And it's made us better by having him there and making that ability, his ability to play center. Good to see you. Um, so nice to have, I imagine, as a head coach going into a season where every year there's so many unknowns and you're settled at quarterback. How meaningful is that? And you know, after what we saw last year, so much so much good thing that it's Aaliyah to now have, know what you have back there. And I mean, just I, there must give you a lot of confidence and maybe some calmness going into week one. It's definitely a steadying force for us to have a, a returning starter at quarterback. That's not been a luxury, uh, at least during my 13 years here with that position that to be able to come back and then have a returning starter, healthy, no questions about it. Uh, bringing in Reese Udinsky has definitely improved us and improved that room, and it created some competition in it. I think that's brought the best out of all those guys, but Leah, his familiarity with what we do on offense, I think the addition of Dan Enos coming in and, and his knowledge of what we do on offense and how he's been able to continue the development of Leah uh, has really made things easier for us on the offensive side. Uh, definitely need to make sure that with Leah, we continue uh, to have him make good decisions. I think he has a very comfortable uh, level with the receivers now after being able to be here a year and a half with these guys this summer, being able to, to do the things with the player run practices and develop a chemistry. So uh, we'll see this Saturday kind of if all the work and uh, the, the things that he's done come to fruition and allow him to go out and play really well for us. Mike, I'm sure you had a, a list of questions for yourself entering uh, the beginning of practice just a few weeks ago as far as things that you, answers you wanted to find out by now. Was there one question that was answered to your satisfaction uh, between then and now that you'd like to share with us? And what sort of things can't be answered until Saturday at 3.35? Yeah, you know, most of my questions, because of my knowledge of our players and our systems and our coaching staff, you know, when you bring in Brian Stewart, who I'm familiar with, and the system that we run on defense, not changing him, adding to it, uh, bringing in a Dan Enos, uh, elevating Coach Zook on special teams. So not a lot of questions going into it. Now, I do have two questions, and these are the same two questions that I asked our team uh, going into training camp that, as a coaching staff, we have placed a, a huge emphasis on. And one is, will we be a team that plays with discipline? Um, you don't win ball games beating yourself. As I've said here, and I know it sounds like a coaching cliche to a lot of you guys, but teams that play with great discipline typically give themselves a chance to win. They don't help their opponent. And so we've worked really hard to try to, you know, empower our guys to understand the importance of playing with great discipline. And a lot of times it starts with, you know, how they are off the field. If you have a team that's an undisciplined team off the field, uh, where you have a lot of off the field distractions and issues, which you know I'm knocking on wood that we've been very fortunate that we haven't had a lot of these instances of, of guys not doing things the right way. And so we feel like going into year three with this team, there's a really good understanding of uh, the Turk way, how we want to do things. And now hopefully it transfers over on the football field with us playing with the kind of discipline, you know, not beating ourselves, not getting the dumb penalties or all the self-inflicted wounds that typically happen with teams that 
that uh, you know don't win. And then the next question was, was how we want to handle adversity. And we we're faced with a little adversity during training camp. We had some really hot days where we had to fight through weather. But now we're going to have opportunities where we may get punched in the mouth and we may, you know, get knocked down. And the question is, is are we built as a team and as a football family well enough to get up off the ground and continue the fight together and not break apart? And so those are the two questions. And as you know, I said earlier, as a team, you create your identity every year. It's different, you know. Last year's team is last year's team, and this year's team is a new team. So uh, this team has a chance here in the early part of the year, this first game against a great opponent, to kind of establish what type of identity we'll have as a team. Uh, within the first two to three games, you usually know. And that, that's what, those are the questions I have, but they can only be answered Saturday at 3.30 here in the Shell. Hey, Mike. Um, kind of related to you know, your answers there, um, because of what you guys went through last year, and even let's say the year before as you were getting your feet wet here, what have you learned about this group, and maybe not the freshmen because they weren't here the previous years, but the, the ups and downs that you went through last year, and even this summer, whether it's on field, COVID, off, you know, or off the field, COVID, on the field. But what have you learned about this group, and what can fans expect from this group when they see them at the show on Saturday? Yeah, I think the big thing that I've learned is, one, it, 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 the only way it works and the only way your program grows is if there's buy-in in, in all phases, meaning player to player, player to coach, coach to coach, coach to player. And, and as we've gone through and stabilized this football family and this football program over the last couple of years, I've really learned that these guys have bought in. I mean, I really, really feel good about the culture that's, has, that's been created. And you see it every day when how we practice. You see it in meetings when, uh, you know, back in the day when a, a guy maybe nods off in a meeting and one of his teammates kind of sits there and doesn't say a word. And now you got guys say, man, wake up, let's go, lock in. When you start hearing that and you start hearing your players say the things that we talk about each and every day with them to you guys as the media, uh, you know it's sinking in. And so as I've always talked about, you know, player-driven teams are the ones that usually win big. I feel like we're heading in the right direction uh, of being that type of team. I see tremendous leadership. You look at the three captains, you know, Sam O is a guy that didn't play a lot of football uh, early in high school. And there's nobody that benefited from the pandemic more than him because he got a bonus year. We're bringing him back as kind of a super senior. And I mean, he's put, worked himself into where I think he's an NFL prospect. You know, Dante Deem is his growth in our program as a guy that coming in maybe was one of those guys that didn't always do things and wasn't always bought in. I mean, this guy has just transformed himself into a tremendous leader off the field, a guy that's very vocal, a guy that's put the work in. And then Brian Cobbs, I mean, we can't give and shower enough love to this type of leadership because he's a guy that's really unselfish. You know, he's kind of always had to play in the shadow of maybe a Rakim Jarrett, a Dante Demas, and you guys see those two as being a star. And to me, Brian Cobbs is as much of a star player on this team as we have. And there's a host of other guys that, you know, that, that I think fit that mold. And that's what I've come to like and enjoy and looking forward to seeing how this team plays together because they kind of fit what I'm talking about when I say it needs to be a player-led uh, culture. How gratifying is that to you that they have gone in and you know, know that what you're preaching is getting brought you know. You know, it's rewarding from the standpoint that it, I don't feel like every day I come to work, I'm, I'm a, a principal where there's somebody in my office waiting to be reprimanded for something. I mean, they kind of, I like being around these guys. These guys are really good guys. Uh, I mean, I really like the, the, the way they've come together. And so for me, when I'm coming to work, I can't say maybe the first year because of all the issues last year with COVID and players having ability to opt out. And, you know, like I said, we've lost some guys along the way that decided to leave the program. And sometimes there's uh, addition by subtraction. And I feel really good about culture, as I said at the Big Ten Media Day, that this culture is where we need it to be, and we'll continue to grow that thing, and I think going through the battles of a, a tough season like we have coming up, a big-time schedule, obviously opening up against a team that went to a bowl game, a rival that I think has won nine of the last ten games, well coached, you know, Coach Brown does a great job over there with those guys. I mean, it's a great opportunity for us, and I'm looking forward to see our players go out and lead us. Take up three more to your right, first row right. Uh, hey, Coach, going off uh, what you're saying about the rivalry, uh, just talk about what does it mean to you to see this rivalry come back after a few years both teams have not played each other? 
Yeah, I mean, I think it's always good. I mean, I'm a big fan of, you know, the, the rivalry type games and rivalries to me, again, you know, you guys make them that, but I do think geographically, uh, this is a game I know when I grew up being a Turk fan that this was a game that was always a big one on the calendar. I know coaching under Ralph Friedgen here, uh, this was one of those games where the hair would be up on the back of his neck because he really didn't like those guys. And so you know, I got a text from Scotty McBride this week who also came back and became kind of a West Virginia killer during his time here saying, hey, man, it's West Virginia week. Let's go get them. And so I think the people, the former players and our fans that are really, you know, traditional turf fans understand that this is a, a regional uh, border rivalry. Uh, they've had their way with us, obviously, nine of the last 10 games. And, you know, we got an opportunity here this Saturday at the Shell to go out and create an identity for ourselves and tell what kind of team we're going to be this year. Um, with Talia, and particularly with some of those positive moments last year, maybe who his brother is, year two in his position, how, how do you help a quarterback deal with that level of expectation or pressure if he feels that? Yeah, I mean, the good thing is, is there is no pressure on Leah. I mean, and, and I've tried to sell this to our team. I mean, the only expectations that, that are expectation to us are the ones we place upon ourselves. and. Lee is a champion. Um, he was born and raised to be a champion. Uh, this guy gets it. He loves the game of football. Uh, he has fun with it. So, you know, I don't necessarily see the, the shadow or uh, the last name creating any type of anxiety for him because, I mean, he's here in Maryland. Uh, he's got a great last name. He comes from a great family. His family's been very good to me, obviously, as a coach. Probably wouldn't be here as the head coach of Maryland if it wasn't for the job that his brother did at Alabama to help get me back here. And so um, I'm excited for Leah. Uh, he puts the work in, he's talented. Uh, he's a guy that, uh, you know, imparts, you know, has a great impact on others around him, which to me, that's what leadership is. And, you know, I'm excited for him this uh, upcoming season. Thank you, Coach. One more time. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I ain't going to name man. <laughs> Hey, Coach, with the uh, in-person classes back this week and the season getting underway, how do you and your staff continue to take care of your players' mental health? And are there any leaders on the team in that regard that are outspoken? I mean, yeah, I'm the leader of the mental health uh, deal in terms of, you know, we got open door policies here. We're doing everything we can to kind of normalize an unnormal situation like what we are going through. Um, you know, we're not out of the woods yet with COVID or with the pandemic, but we are sure in a better place mostly because our team has taken the actions to, to, to vaccinate themselves at a high level, which to, even opens up the door for us to try to have some normalcy. But we also realize and educate them on that we're not out of the woods yet. We still have to kind of be smart, you know, within these type of settings, they need to wear their masks to class. We're fighting them to sit up front in the front of the classroom and be student athletes. I mean, we're not here to just play football. We got to spend 28 days, kind of 24 hours a day football, and now they have what we call the distractions. You got the educational part, you got your parents coming to the games, you got study hall, you've got social life that's kind of opening back up a little bit, and they've got to prioritize the things that are important to them. And you know, mental health is important to us. We'll continue to, to support our guys any way we can uh, from that standpoint. And again, we feel good about the team and, and, and the direction of it. Thanks, guys.